after a nine-week break, the Eels were electric against the Broncos last Thursday night, claiming a 34-6 victory during the season restart. It only gets tougher for the Parramatta side this weekend, though. They're up against traditional rivals Manly at Bankwest Stadium. Cody Kay caught up with Eels halfback Mitchell Moses ahead of the game and started by asking him about Parra's stunning form. Yeah, it's uh, obviously a good start for us. Um, but, you know, we're, we've got a big test this week against uh, Manly, which will really test us out and, and see where we are. And we've had a good defensive start of the year, so hopefully we can keep that intact and, and put in a good performance against Manly. I was going to get to Manly a little later, but um, you sort of brought me to it already. I, I don't say this with any disrespect to the teams you've beaten, um, but obviously the Dogs, the Titans in particular, were probably predicted to struggle a little bit this year. Um, the Broncos, I, I guess it's hard to know what they're going to do, but you'd have to say on paper Manly's probably your biggest test yet. Um, what have you made of them so far in, in those tougher games that they played early on in the season against the likes of Melbourne and the Roosters? Yeah, it will be a big test. Um, you know, they beat obviously the the reigning premiers in, in the Roosters early on in a in a in a tough game um, before the COVID started, and um, obviously they put in a great performance against the Bulldogs uh, last week. So uh, we'll be you know we'll be ready, and um, you know we'll watch a bit of video tomorrow at training and see see where we can work them out. But they'll definitely be our biggest test of the year, and I guess it'll give us a good look at uh, where we are, I guess, as a team and. Um, you know, going forward as a, as a team as well. Mitch, when, when you read through the stats for Parramatta this year, um, it, it's startling. Most points scored, 88. You've only conceded 14 of them. Um, you, you're third for line break, second for tackle bus, first for offloads. It just must feel like it's humming. And I suppose the remarkable thing about <coughs> that is how inexperienced your spine is. Yeah, we do have a bit of an inexperienced spine, I guess you could say that. But... Um... You know, Dylan's played probably what, 10 games or something like that, and Reedy's played um, 30 something. And me and Gutho are the older guys in the in the spine, but you know, still still feel young, I guess. And I guess you could say that. But um, you know, we're we're working pretty well there. But it's you know, it's the platform that our forwards are laying for us. The, the you know what they're doing in defence, and they're just turning up for each other. And uh, you know, us backs can probably help them out a bit more. We made a few errors on the weekend, which we can we can fix up and, and help them out a bit. But um, you know, we're we're trying to base our game around defence and, um, you know, there's no better way to, to see where you're at with your defence and um, this Saturday I come against Manly, you know, a great attacking side. You see what they did against the Bulldogs um, on the weekend. So it would be a good test to see where we're at. Well, yeah, I mean, if you talk about defence, you let in two against the Dogs, six against the Titans and just six against the Broncos. Can you just talk us through the mentality? I mean, you hear a lot of, a lot of players talk about it. It's, it's really a mental mindset um, with defence. And I suppose in the past with Parramatta, there's been an inconsistency. But, gee, you guys have got it right so far this season. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Um, you know, we've got, our, we've got our structures in play, um, our, our structures in defence, sorry, that we, we like to follow and... Um, you know, I find, we find that if we're following them that, um, you know, we'll defend most plays and, and things like that. You know, like I said before, it'll be a great test for us against Manly. They're a great attacking side. They've got strike across the whole park. So um, it'll be a good test to see where our defence is at. You would have seen what Tommy Turbo did to the Bulldogs. How do you, how do you plan for him? Yeah, mate, um, he's, a, he's a classy player. You try to, we've got to try to limit his, as much touches as he, as he has and, um, you know, not going to give him as much room as, as what um, teams have given him in the past. So uh, we'll do our homework on him and, and hopefully do a job on him. But, mate, he's a, he's a tough player to, to mark up against. He's, you know, he's, he's one of the best fullbacks in the, in, in the games behind, in, behind Teddy and, um, you know, we'll look to, look to do a job on him and, and see where we can stop him. What about for you personally, Mitch? Um, according to, to, to Brad, you guys had managed, or the, the Eels had done a pretty good job of keeping a, a bit of a calf complaint uh, quiet from us. Yeah. None of us, none of us had any idea, but you certainly played lights out. It didn't look like it, it hampered you. Yeah, I probably wasn't at 100, percent I guess on on Thursday night. But you know the, what the boys did for me and and helped me out in that way. Um, you know, I've had that that calf complaint during the during the. Um, a preseason, I guess you could call it, and um, it, I think it gave Do a big chance to to step up and and take control of the team in in another way. Um, I was always there helping him out and and doing what I had to do to to help him play his best footy. And um, you know he stepped up in the in the preseason and you know took over the team, I guess, and, and showed his footy on on Thursday night. He really, you know, I kind of took a back seat, I guess, and um, you know we had our coaching 
that Brad Brad had a had a strict strategy of, of how we wanted to play Brisbane, and um, you know I just I sat back and watched Dill Dill go, and um, you know when he's in that when he's in that mood, you just let him go, and um, you know he was outstanding, and I think he's you know taken a lot of ownership, I guess, and in that in that role that um, he had to do in the preseason. We all know how much pressure comes with wearing the Parramatta number seven. The same as same as any club, but particularly that Parramatta number seven jersey. Dill Brown ran the book around the footy seventeen times the other night. He's only played eighteen games of footy, but it must take a lot of pressure off you and enable you to control the team and, and do the things you do really well. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got a great combination. I think that's what works well. He's he's a, straight, a great strong runner of the football, and um, you actually don't realise how strong he is when he takes on the line and how mm. sharp his foot, how, how he moves, he just moves so well. So um, that's what we want from him and that's where we, we find that he's playing his best footy. So um, I'll take as much pressure off him with the with the game management side of the of, of footy and um, I'll, I'll control all that stuff while you know he just lets loose and, and um, you know, gets run and takes the line on. I think that's when he's at his most dangerous. The new rules, Mitch, um, for everyone sitting down, the, the spectacle was fantastic. You guys are obviously, I suppose you and the Broncos were the guinea pigs in a lot of ways because you were the first ones to play under those rules, but um, it certainly looked like it's going to suit the Eels. What did you make of it? Um, yeah, I, I liked it. It's, um, it was good. I think you kind of get that, that real good relationship with the ref and, um, you know, having the one ref there and, and, and also just how free-flowing the game was. There wasn't mm. as many penalties, but, um, you know, when there was... It was free flowing. It was up tempo. It was it was fast footy, and uh, we definitely found that the, the first 25 minutes of our our game on the weekend was was lightning fast, and I was out of my feet for for a fair bit of it. But um, yeah, it's it, it, I, I like the I, I like the new rule changes that um, the NRL's brought in. I think it's it's really benefiting the footy, and 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 it's even better for our audiences, I guess. Those, those teams like the Broncos that have got massive forward packs, um, if you can keep turning them around, they're, they're going to struggle at the back end of games. Would you agree? Oh, mate, they've got, they got a great side. I think, um, you know, we, we, we play pretty good footy on Thursday night and um, they had a fair few players out, a fair few players in key positions. So um, I don't think they'll be looking into it as much as um, everyone's been talking about it. They've got a great side. They've got Fafita to come back to Vita Pangai. Um, yeah, those types of players that are, that are massive ins for them and, and massive parts of their team. So I don't think they'll look into it as much. But um, I guess with the big forward packs to try to play them, I think you've got to, you got to try to kick to the corners and make them come out of their own end, you know, really turn them around and get them, you know, get them coming off their own line. Don't give them as much footy in, um, in your half of the half of the field. So, um, you know, kick. I think high completions is, is where the footy's, Footy game's going to go. Um, if you're completing high, uh, you're a big chance at winning the game, just like the Warriors did on, on the weekend. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because I've got a lot of a lot of Parramatta friends and I hear from them constantly yeah. about the belief this season and all the rest of it. But when I say 1983, what does that mean to you? Um, that was the first come was it? Or last I think, one? I think it was your last one. First one? Or yeah. 86? Uh, no, 86 was the last one. All right, I'll go again. When so I say 1986... They, they, won, they won the three-peak. <laughs> <laughs> so when yeah. I say 86, what does that mean to you? Um, yeah, it's the last time Paramount's won a premiership. So uh, there was a lot of great players in in that side that, um, you know, that, that want to see us succeed, I guess. And, um, you know, I've spoken to a couple of them and they're kind of sick of them getting bought up all the time, I guess. And they, they kind of want it to be our time. And, um, you know, but we we got to just keep it a level head, you know, keep taking it game by game and, um, you know, hopefully we can come away with something and, and, and build something as a, as a club going forward. The game's coming up after this. You've got Manly Panthers, Roosters, Raiders, really, really tough games. All of them are at Bank yeah. West. There's a remarkable opportunity for, for the Eels and obviously <coughs> there are no fans there, so it negates a, a fairly large aspect of a home crowd advantage, yeah. but um, you guys obviously have a connection with that ground. Yeah, we love playing there, but... Um, you know, I think you've seen over the over the last round and uh, over the last two rounds, I guess, and um, that you know playing away footy is, you know, even travelling, it's it, it's it's not as bad, I guess. And um, yeah, we we'll, I mean, we do love playing at Bankwest. We've got a great record at Bankwest, but um, I think it's anyone's home game, I guess, wherever we play. So as long as the crowd's not there, it's it, it's anyone's game. But um, hopefully, we know the. The, the, the dips in the ground and things like that at Bankwest would be better than oppositions. 
I know you've got a fair bit to get through, Mitch, so I won't keep you too much longer, but you've kicked seven, 16 from 17, 94%, and it looks like you've got a slightly different lead-up to the way you kick. It's almost like you're taking a golf swing. What, have, you, yeah. have, you, have you changed anything through the off-season? Um, I've changed that. Uh, I just... <clears throat> I honestly couldn't kick a goal at the start of pre-season. I, I ended up going up to Brad and I said, mate, I can't kick. Like, you're going to have to give it a gutho. Oh, I can't. I, I'm, I wasn't hitting anything at training. Mm. It was it was frustrating me and um, I just kind of changed my process and it's working for me at the moment. It's, I, I just don't see how uh, golf and goal kicking is, is much different. You know, you always, you know, how you strike the ball, uh, how you follow through your approach and um, all those types of things all come into it. And, you know, it's the exact same as golf. I'm, not the best golfer, but uh, I've tried to um, I've tried to work the two into into one, I guess, and um, yeah, I feel like it's working for me at the moment. So I'll just keep going with it. I find that fascinating because I've never seen any player take that kind of approach. How did you How did you land there? Um, I don't know. Well, I just tried to feel like um, when I was playing golf that if I was hitting through the ball and like following through with my um, my swing, mm. that um, I was hitting it nice. But like, mate. They, they ended up going anywhere, anyways. But um, but yeah, that's, that was worry. yeah, exactly. I'm not I'm not the best golfer, but um, I just found like I just I, I don't know. I maybe it's just something in my head that it's working for me. Um, in my head that you know those two align, I guess, and uh, it's working for me at the moment. So I'll stick with it. Well, Mitch, it's been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic watching the yields so far. I mean, the performances that you've put together have been absolutely startling. You've put the entire competition on notice. But as you say, you've got a very tough uh, test against the Seagulls this weekend, mate. We thank you for your time and uh, all the best. Thanks for talking to us on Too Fox easy. Sports News, my friend. Too easy. Thanks, guys.